uh, welcome to this ICRJR Physical Sciences Master Course by Agri Edit. And I'm your mentor, Naimisha. And in brief, uh, to tell about myself, I have completed my undergraduation from Andrew, Andhra Pradesh, and master's from ICRIR in New Delhi. And also, I have secured All India Rank 1 in ICR JRF 2021 examination and All India Rank 3 in ICR SRF 2023 examination. And also, I have cleared UGC net with JRF and assistant professor and ASRB net in soil science in the same year, that is in MSc. And now, today, uh, we are going to see the very first topic of our master course, that is rocks and minerals. So let me share the screen. Later we can discuss. Uh, today we are going to see our very first topic that is rocks and minerals. These rocks and minerals are coming to its importance in our soil science. These rocks and minerals constitute the main portion of this soil pedology, which deals with the genesis of our soil science that is rocks and all formation of soil soil order, soil origins, everything related to the genesis and formation of soil begins with this pedology. And rocks and minerals are the important constituents of soil that we know like rocks will disintegrate and decompose and the process will go on like that and ultimately it will result in soil. So rocks are very important for the formation of our soil. And also minerals, how minerals will be helpful to us? Minerals, yeah, uh, they constitute nutrients in them. For example, if we take calcite or so, calcite yeah, mineral, Michelle. if we take I'm audible. calcium carbonate, what it will release? Calcium. In turn, it will be useful for plants only. Plants will take up calcium and likewise minerals will also be useful as nutrient source or any other type. So likewise, these rocks and minerals is very important to understand and also to remember. If we see an exam point of view, uh, just before starting this course, I would like, just one second. Uh, okay, students, sorry for the interruption. Um, these rocks and minerals, as we see now, the importance and all. But uh, I just want to give you one suggestion regarding this physical science course. In the whole syllabus, you may come across many new topics which are not known to you in your whole UG also. Just remember two things before starting any new topic or any existing topic. Just try to answer yourself one two uh, one or two questions that is why we are studying this topic and how we can link it with other topics for example if we take this rocks and minerals why we are studying it because rocks and minerals are present in the soil ultimately they will be uh, helpful in the formation of soil this is the reason why we are studying rocks and minerals how we can link it with other topics like they will disintegrate and decompose and release nutrients which will be taken up by plants and microbes so likewise, you have to analyze before studying, just try to analyze why we are studying this and how well we can link it with other topic. So let us go to the topic now. See, uh, here in rocks and minerals, it is all memory based topic, like we have to understand few things, but the more thing is uh, depending on how much you will remember. Uh, yeah, we will come across uh, many new terminologies here. Some of you might have al already read because you are uh, almost all of you are in fourth year of your UG. Uh, just we will uh, make it a discussion like session, not like a lecture mode. Okay, try to interact more so that I can also uh, learn from you people. Not only this uh, sharing of the things, but also I can learn from you. So let us see. First one is the petrology. We have three term, uh, three definitions in the uh, rocks like petrology, petrography, and petrogenesis. All for all the prefix is petros. So it is something related to rocks. Next we will see the suffix. First one is logos. 
logos we uh, we have studied many like zoology like that in all logos means study right study or discourse like that it will come so petrology means it is the science of rocks study of science of the rocks and the uh, rocks are the units of earth crust so just forget about it petrology is the science of rocks next is petrography demography geography like the petrography graphy means description it will give about description of the rocks so just focus on the key point here petrography means description petrology is the science of rocks next is petrogenesis genesis means how it is originated like so that is study of the origin of rocks so genesis means this uh, from ancestry how it is coming this few generation pedigree and all the related terminologies you have to be uh, remember so these three terminology are very important it will often be given like they will confuse you they will give uh, the science which is dealing with description of rocks petrology petrography petrogenesis what we have to give petrography so this is all about petrology petrography and petrogenesis next we will see the definition of rock what is rock a rock is defined as a hard mass of mineral matter just read it in this point of view and how i am telling you just read it in the same point of view rock is defined as hard mass how we perceive the rock while touching it is very hard so it is a hard mass of mineral matter rock is composed of minerals so hard mass of mineral matter comprising two or more rock forming minerals so rock is nothing but a hard mass or substance it is composed of many units they are called minerals so that is the definition of rock and in this rock usually rocks may contain many kinds of minerals that is two or more but there are some rocks which are containing only one mineral that is mono mineralic rock examples olivine and dunite these two examples are very important olivine and dunite are mono mineralic rocks those two are exception Uh, all of the rocks we come across in the soil most of them are polymineralic they contain two or more minerals but mono mineralic are olivine and dunite and next uh, how these rocks are formed and all formation we will see later but this magma what is there this is very important it is the source for formation of all types of rocks magma it is nothing but uh, the molten material which is formed after the volcano eruption is over that means the whole surface of it passed through a molten stage and the first solid rock was derived from molten material it is termed as magma means uh, we all know about volcano eruptions so lava will flow out like this and it will uh, accumulate on the land so after it is getting accumulated this uh, hot lava it contains temperature of around more than 1000 degrees centigrade but after it is exposed to temperature what will happen here equilibrium will be achieved so this temperature is more here and in an environment the temperature will be low so the temperature of lava will be lowered from 1000 degrees like the temperature to less than 100 degrees centigrade so what happens when the subject cooled initially it is in liquid state magma that is lava after it is cooled it will turn into solid and this solid we are calling as ma magma so this definition is very important it is just a molten material resulting from volcanic eruption next uh, examples of rocks we will see many examples here just try to remember every example we are going through now uh, examples for hard rocks granite and basalt loose rocks sandstone and conglomerate loose means they are very friable kind of rocks are usually hard that is of no doubt but there are some rocks which are very friable that we can easily disintegrate them um, with a hand or so so examples are conglomerate and sandstone and uh, coming to the differentiating characters between rocks and minerals rock possesses certain characters like uh, it has structure color and all and also it contains many minerals that is what mineralogical makeup means and it helps in their identification and in minerals these same colors are not so well defined 
and in minerals we we will see many other characters like hardness scale like that we will see many other features through which we can identify particular mineral next we will see the formation of rocks uh, now uh, we understood what magma is so we have one volcano it is erupted and lava got condensed into magma so this condensed form magma it is nothing but igneous rock this is the first first rock that is formed from magma so it is also called as primary rock this is important igneous rock is also known as primary rock and later on what happens this igneous rock it will undergo disintegration like due to external factors or so uh, it will get disintegrated what happens after disintegration it will turn into pieces and through the action of different agents like wind water ice etc it will get transported and deposited somewhere it will get transported like this and then deposit in some some place where it acceleration will be stopped so after this whole process is over like what is there here disintegration after disintegration it will undergo transportation followed by deposition and after deposition also the rock will not be formed immediately there will be another process that is diagenesis this is very important uh, terminology diagenesis is nothing but after the rock is transported and deposited this diagenesis occur that means it is nothing but cooling and compaction of rock so this compaction of rock is nothing but diagenesis these four steps are very important they are uh, helpful in sedimentary rock formation ultimately we will get sedimentary rock here so it is forming from igneous rock which is primary rock so sedimentary rock is also called as secondary rocks so we have seen two types of rocks here igneous and sedimentary rocks and we have, we have also another type of rock that is metamorphic rock metamorphic rock how it is from both igneous rock and also this sedimentary rock it will undergo changes due to heat and pressure same sedimentary rock also undergoes changes due to heat and pressure what happens if we, we have some object with us we are subjecting it to high temperature that means we are giving it some heat what happens here this elemental composition will be changed in such a way that the whole rock will be altered and a new rock will be formed and that is what we are calling it as metamorphic rock in entomology also we will come across some things like metamorphism like that what happens there actually the whole structure is getting changed here also the same uh, principle applies here the whole rock surface or structure is getting changed to metamorphic rocks so these three are uh, the major kind of rocks we will come across uh, just remember the igneous rocks are primary rocks they are forming initially and they will give rise to sedimentary and then metamorphic rocks and here we uh, what we saw through the action of heat and pressure these are forming if it is due to heat it is called dermometamorphism heat means dermal so dermo if it is due to pressure it is dynamometamorphism if it occurs due to both means thermodynamo metamorphism sometimes it may also occur due to water if it is due to water what we will call hydrometamorphism so these are the major kind of rocks we will see this is what as i told magma will be there cooling and crystallization occurs and it will form igneous rock and this igneous rock again it will be uh, weathering that means disintegration transportation cementation it gives sedimentary rock same as we saw earlier same is there here uh, just uh, after you get this uh, notes you just go through this whole terminology as of now just concentrate on the class i was teaching later on you can study okay
Next, this is nothing. This is just a diagram, diagrammatic representation of these three kind of rocks. See here, uh, the initial volcanic eruption here, magma will be formed. There we will find igneous rock. Later, it will get disintegrated and transported and deposit somewhere. It will form sedimentary rock, and they both undergo many changes in the land. It will give metamorphic rocks. We will see all types of rocks now. In brief, igneous rock. Igneous rock means it is derived from Latin word. Ignis means fire. This is very important. Latin word and fire. It is formed by cooling and crystallization of magma, either on or beneath the surface of earth. Here we will uh, see two types of igneous rock. Uh, as we saw earlier, magma will be cooling, uh, cooled and crystallized to form igneous rock. But where this cooling and crystallization occurs, it will decide the formation of either intrusive rock or extrusive igneous rock. Igneous rock is again two types, intrusive and extrusive. Extrusive means external, means on the surface of it. Intrusive means internal, means beneath the surface of earth. So these two types of rocks are again present in this igneous rock. And they are non-laminar, like they are uh, non-laminar or massive, both are same. Massive means we can't uh, uh, differentiate them into layers or so. It is just a massive structure. And uh, it will uh, make up to 95% of the earth crust. This is very important. Major composition of earth crust is decided by igneous rocks. It is very important. And we have also, uh, we also need to remember, if we are asking, if they are asking this total earth crust means, we have to mention igneous rock. If they are mentioning only top 5 kilometers means, we have to write sedimentary rocks. So, don't be confused. Whole earth crust means igneous rocks are abundant. Only at a, a top 5 kilometers means sedimentary rocks are abundant. Next, formation we saw. And just remember this uh, temperature, 650 to 750 degrees centigrade of that lava. And classification as we saw, extrusive and intrusive classification. Just see here, don't focus on the points here, just see. Extrusive means what we saw, this cooling and crystallization will occur on the surface of it. Let it be the surface of earth, earth surface. So, the cooling and crystallization occurs here. In extrusive or volca volcanic rocks, they are formed on the surface of it, either by consolidation of molten lava or by accumulation of volcanic fragments. When it is occurring outside the earth's surface, it will be subjected to many environmental factors. So, the disintegration of this rock will be more, right? Compared to the rock which is present inside and is in a, like a protect protected layer, the earth surface will act as protected layer here. So, disintegration is not that much heavy. But here, due to action of wind or water, many external agents, the disintegration will be more. So, what happens when there is more disintegration? More particles will be generated. That means, finer texture will be present in case of extrusive rocks. If we see intrusive rocks, the disintegration won't be that much there. External factors will also won't that much influence. So, core structure will be present. That means larger size particles will be resulted. Examples of extrusive rock are basalt. Intrusive rock is granite. See here, the cooling of magma is very slow. Why it is slow? It is within the protection of the surface of earth. And the time taken is also quite long. So, coarse grain rock will be resulted. And this is how we have to remember this extrusive and intrusive rocks. If you remember just uh, by framing these uh, differences like this, you can't uh, remember for a long time. Just remember this process and then you frame your own sentences how to differentiate these two rocks. Examples are very important. Extrusive rocks are basalt, intrusive is granite. Next, based on chemical composition also, we can uh, divide this igneous rock into many types. Like if the silica content is more it is called acid rocks. Silica content is less. Means it is basic rock. Examples are important everywhere. I am telling you repeatedly. These examples will decide your marks. If the 
bit is coming from this rocks and minerals topic and all the topic and concept i am explaining this is just for your understanding so that you can remember very easily the whole topic and must and should we should read this table means how you have to read this we know plutonic that means uh, intrusive and extrusive rocks we know in those extrusive intrusive only again they classified it into acid neutral and basic so try to read in this way the rock which is plutonic and also acid that means granite and tonalite same way rock which is volcanic and acid rhyolite and dacite like that you need to remember so these are the major description characters of uh, some important kinds of rocks basalt it is most abundantly found dark colored fine grain see fine grain where we saw this one in extrusive rock basalt is an extrusive rock so it is fine grain so like that you have to interlink all the concepts and it contains 50% feldspars 50% ferromagnesian minerals and the interesting thing is that there is a sister rock for basalt that is gabbro the only difference between them is basalt is fine grain but gabbro is coarse grain this is very important likewise we will come across granite which is coarse grain and rhyolite which is fine grain and pumice pumice is also very important usually when we throw some rock into a beaker of water what will happen rock will be reach it down to the beaker why rocks are very dense compared to the water so they will reach down but if you throw pumice into the water interestingly it will float on the surface like how if we throw any lightweight material into water how it will float this pumice rock if we throw it in water also same thing will happen because it is very lightweight rock and it is having lower specific gravity than water see physics is apply see physics we have to apply here if two particles are there and one is having lower specific gravity than another one what will happen if we are throwing it in this one automatically the one which is having lower density will be floating on the higher density one so this is the same principle we have to apply here pumice is very important example next is sedimentary rocks same it is derived from latin word sedimentum means settling they are also called secondary or stratified rocks the formation as we saw earlier weathering or disintegration transportation deposition and diagenesis so weathering uh, how weathering will occur again we will see it in physical chemical biological weathering just give a brief reading here uh, nothing much is there transportation how it is occurring saltation means something related to air transport and soil fluxion or soil creep means uh, if we take slopy areas the what will happen the soil from top layers will get creep undergo creep movement and settle down this is also one kind of transport so that is what they have given here and then deposition after transport it will be it will be deposited here it is starting transportation and then here it is getting deposited and while depositing what will happen we have large size here, that is coarser particles and small size that is finer particles coarser particles are more dense compared to finer particles so they will get settled first so coarser particles will get settled first later finer particles will come on them yes or no being less dense they will settle later so this kind of uh, deposition is called graded wetting graded means something differentiating here coarser we can see down and finer we are seeing it upper side so this is graded wetting is a feature of sedimentary rock next diagenesis as i told earlier it is compaction after deposition it will undergo compaction these are the definitions for compaction and cementation we can remember it in our terminology it is getting cemented so it is called diagenesis again sedimentary rocks are classified into two main classes fragmental detrital or mechanically formed fragmental means just it is breakdown of rock it is nothing but fragmental or mechanically formed sedimentary rock examples are important again here and chemically formed means 
some chemical agents which are inorganic, organic or biochemical will influence the formation of rocks here. Same, uh, chemically formed rock also. Examples are important. If it is evaporites, rock salt is the main example for evaporites, then gypsum and anhydrite. If it is through precipitation, limestone is important. And if it is through flocculation, dolomite is important. So these examples, as I told earlier, how much you can remember, that much you can score in this topic. All depends on your memory. Keep on reading it. Uh, not, uh, it won't be, you can't remember it in just one reading. Keep on reading, then you will be perfect in this. So next is organically or biochemically formed. So here something, humus or organic material will influence the formation of this particular kind of rock. Next, these are the features of some exam, uh, important sedimentary rocks like conglomerate, sandstone, etc. You can give a brief read after this class is over. Next is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock means some igneous and sedimentary rocks undergo many changes. Heat, pressure, water. They are subject to many changes and then they are getting transformed to metamorphic rocks. See, internal heat, pressure and also chemically active fluids. Water is also a kind of fluid. So, these three will be acting on uh, different rocks and form the metamorphic rocks. And here, banded or laminated character is the most peculiar feature of metamorphic rocks. This is very important. Metamorphic rocks are characterized by this laminated character. If you see metamorphic rocks, if the rock is like this, you can see bands here. Bands or la laminations. So, this is the peculiar feature for metamorphic rocks. Again, this examples for thermal, dynamo, dynamo thermal, hydrometamorphism are very important here. Thermal metamorphism. Next, dynamo thermal. The thermal metamorphism is also known as contact or additive metamorphism because in the contact with the heat, there is an addition of magmatic material to metamorphic rock. So, we are calling it as contact or additive metamorphism. Next is dynamo thermal. Dynamo thermal means dynamo is pressure, thermal is heat. So, dynamo thermal metamorphism and it is associated with mountain building process. This is example. And the, in realistic case, we, are, we will find it in Kulu Manali region of Himalayas. Dynamo thermal metamorphism. And these are the examples of some uh, metamorphic rocks like graphite is a metamorphic rock that is formed from coal. You have to read it like this. Marble is a metamorphic rock. It is formed from limestone. So you have to remember the metamorphic rock and also from where it is forming. That means parent rock you have to remember. Next it is the another classification based on foliation. Foliations means that laminated character is there or not, that is parallel. If there are no foliation, we will call it again as massive. Where we come across this massive structure, that is igneous rocks. Again, non-foliated massive structure is present also in this metamorphic rocks. Other one is granular. Just go through these examples once. And these are the some important metamorphic rocks we will find in nature. Next, minerals. Minerals are nothing but, till now what we have seen, rocks, what are the types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks, how they are getting formed and next you have to see the examples associated with each kind of rocks. First go through the concept, how we are, uh, how each rock is forming and what is the science behind it. Then you read the examples associated with each classification. Now we will see minerals. Minerals are nothing but, the solid substances and they are composed of atoms having orderly and regular arrangement. This is the very important definition. Minerals are composed of atoms. They are having orderly and regularly arrangement. Uh, have you come across this lattice structure? Lattice structure we will see in minerals. Means any direction if we see this mineral, we will see the uniform arrangement and regular uh, order of this whole structure. So, this is what minerals, that means they are 
not asymmetric like rocks, they are very symmetric. And examples of minerals like gypsum, olivine, feldspar, etc. And this silica tetrahedron, we will see later in silicates, SiO4, how it comes, means why SiO4 is only the basic structure of the silicates, why not SiO2 or so? We will see it later. Uh, next is CaSO4. It is called a mineral, anhydrite or gypsum. And when it is combined with water, like CaSO4 is gypsum, when it is combining with water, it forms another mineral. So minerals are very reactive in nature, not like rocks. They are very reactive. These are some of rock forming minerals and non ferro magnesian minerals. That means which do not have iron or magnesium in them. They constitute major portion of the earth crust and ferro magnesian minerals are also important. You have to remember these percent distributions. Must and should you need to remember these percent distributions. Next, formation of minerals. How these minerals are formed? As I told, minerals are composed of individual silica tetrahedral units. So, if we see the valence, what is the valency state of silica? Si plus 4. What is for uh, valency state for oxygen? O minus 2. See, here 1 silica is combining. So, 1 into plus 4. And how many oxygens are combining? 4 oxygen. O4, right? O4. So, 4 into minus 2. 1 into plus 4, 4. 4 into minus 2, 8. 4 minus 8 is minus 4. So, the basic silica tetrahedron unit is SiO4 minus 4. This formula is very important. They may twist you in objective like SiO4 minus 3, SiO4 minus 2, like that they will give. Don't get, fall into the trap. Just remember this concept, how the balance is getting balanced here and how we are arriving at this minus 4. Just try to remember this and also, if possible, also give a brief read on this radius also. Sometimes they are asking uh, this one also, radius of uh, central silicon cation and also surrounding oxygen anions. Just be clear uh, how the charge is coming here. Because if you don't understand this concept, you may not uh, remember all the silicate classification we are going to see now. Next is silica, uh, primary minerals and secondary minerals means primary means uh, the in initially rock forming minerals are primary minerals. They are formed in uh, orderly manner. Next, the minerals which are formed due to weathering of pre-existing primary minerals are secondary minerals which are non-crystalline. Examples are allophane and chalcedony. So, now we will see the silicate minerals. Briefly, the structural silicates, what we will see in this whole course, they are niso silicates. First one is niso. Next, soro silicates. Next, cyclo silicates. And then, iono silicates. And then, phyllo silicates. Last is tectosilicates. These are the major kind of silicates that we are going to see now. Niso silicates. Niso means they are composed of only one silica tetrahedra. Means Si plus 4 will be there here surrounded by O minus 4. That means 4 oxygens. O, O, O. So silica is plus 4, 1 into plus 4. And oxygen are 4, 4 into for each oxygen again minus 2 will be there, right? 4 into minus 2. So, 4 minus 8 minus 4. So, the structural formula for niso silicates is SiO4 minus 4. This structural formula is very important. For niso or island silicates, the structural formula is SiO4 minus 4. Next one is soro silicates. Soro means now. Uh, Niso is island silicates. They are just individual silicate units. Soro means two silicate units. SiO 
another SI ohm. Two silicate units get attached together using another oxygen atom. So this is what soro silicates means. Means two island silicates are getting attached by another oxygen here. Uh, what will be the formula? Si2. How many oxygens are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Si2, O7. How we have to arrive at the charge here? Si is 2. 2 into plus 4. Oxygen is? How many oxygen are there? 7. 7 into minus 2. 8 minus 14. That means minus 6. So, the formula for sorosilicates is Si2O7 minus 6. Next one is cyclosilicates. Cyclo. Cyclo means something. They are arranged like a ring-like structure. So, how we can see cyclosilicates is? See, just uh, look at the diagram I am writing now. Cyclosilicates. 4, 5 and 6. So, we have 6 silica atom here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, SI6. How many oxygens are there? Here, one oxygen will be there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. These are the corner oxygen I have counted now. 12 oxygen. Again, central oxygen will be there, right? So, again, 6 central oxygen will be there. So, 12 plus 6, 18. SI6, O18. So, what will be the charge here? Silica again, 6 into plus 4. Oxygen, 18 into minus 2. What will be the ultimate charge here? It will be minus 12. So, the formula for cyclosilicates will be SI6, O18 minus 12. Likewise, we have to just see the structure of silicate, how it is there and then we have to derive the own structural unit here. If you keep on reading uh, SiO4 minus 4 for solar silicates, SI6 O18 for so, uh, cyclosilicates like that, you will get confused definitely. In JRF, it won't be like a common uh, exam that we will write in our universities. It will be very different. Once you see the question there, although you have read that concept, but you can't uh, memorize it that much soon. So, just uh, go through the con this concept, how we have uh, to derive our own structural unit like this, and then try to remember the associated examples with the each silicate. Niso silicates, if we see, example will be olivine, soro silicates will be epidote, cyclosilicates are beryl, ionosilicates again two times will be there, Single chain ionosilicates, double chain ionosilicates. Single chain will be pyroxene, double chain will be amphiboles. Next, phyllosilicates are also known as sheet silicates. Mica. Mica is the best example for phyllosilicates. Next is tectosilicates. Quartz, feldspar, etc. They are tectosilicates. So, now we have derived only three, right? These another three, now what I will do, I will give the, I will explain how the structure we are getting. You just try yourself how to uh, derive the structural unit formula for these three silicates, okay? And if you have any query, later you can discuss with me or else you can contact uh, with the given mail ID or number. Now we will see ionosilicates. First is single chain ionosilicates. Single chain ionosilicates means structure will be like this. What's happening here? In each silica tetrahedra, one oxygen means uh, the two, uh, two oxygens are getting shared here. From each tetrahedra, two oxygens are getting shared with neighbor tetrahedra in a single sheet. So, single chain ionosilicates. Ionosilicates means chain like. Here, in a single chain, Two oxygens from each tetrahedra is getting shared with other tetrahedra. This is single chain ionosilicates. Now you can you can only frame like uh, you just consider uh, this as one unit, this one as one unit, and you derive the formula. What is SiO formula associated with it? 
Next, double chain inosilicates means two single chain inosilicates will combine here. Means this is one single chain. And again, this will be another single chain. So two single chain will be combined here with the central oxygen atom. It will holding give double chain ionosilicate. That means two chains are present. Here also you just consider this as one unit and derive the formula. SIO formula. Next is tectosilicates. Tecto. Tecto means framework like. Every oxygen is getting shared from the each tetrahedron to surrounding tetrahedra. So the structure will be very compact like this. Very compact. Every oxygen is getting shared. So there is no corner sharing. There is no uh, negative charge that is left behind. So SiO2 0. It will be the formula for tectosilicate. So just you just derive these two silicates formula and We'll see it in next class, whether you have done it right or not, okay? These are the explanations for all. Just uh, you remember that concept I have ta taught you and then you just give one read for it. You will remember it, definitely. Next, next. Ferromagnesium and non-ferromagnesium minerals, which are having iron and magnesium, we are calling it as ferromagnesium, ferro iron. Magnesium, magnesium. Examples are, you have to remember. And these three, these are very important. Orthoclase, albite and anorthite. These are the three minerals which are having almost similar composition except one element is different here. That is potassium for orthoclase, sodium for albite, calcium for anorthite. So in our uh, like... Uh, in 2022 SRF examination, what they have asked, in albite, aluminium replaces silicon in which tetrahedron? Like fourth or second or so. So this you have to remember. For orthoclase and albite, which are uh, uh, univalent ions, fourth tetrahedron is coming here. See, fourth tetrahedron. And for anorthite, that is calcium, which is divalent, second tetrahedron is coming here. You just remember like this, okay? Orthoclase, albite, and anorthite. These three are very important. And next we will see secondary minerals which are formed from primary minerals. Examples are this dolomite, gypsum, etc. And next we will see clay minerals. In soil chemistry, the clay minerals will be dealt uh, in depth. Like we have many clay minerals which are of uh, clay size fraction also less than 2 microns. And these are smectite, kaolinite, illite, chloride, etc. These clay minerals, uh, as of now, uh, since it is the topic of minerals, I have just included in this. But later on, in brief description, uh, we'll see it later in soil chemistry. Next, distribution of these uh, uh, minerals and rocks. Like if it is black soil, smectite is present. If it is laterite soil or red soil, kaolinite is present. These all, you will come across the soil classification. Uh, don't worry. Silicates we have seen till now, which are having silicate tetrahedra. But there are also some minerals which are non-silicates. That means oxides, hydroxides or hydrous oxides. See, if we see hematite, it is Fe2O3. Likewise, limonite, geotite, gibbisite, some oxides, hydro geotite is again hydroxide, FeOOH, like that. Silicate is not involved here, but this oxygen and hydrogen, they will get interact with each other and form many minerals here. Hematite is Fe2O3. Uh, try to remember the most important characters of this uh, non-silicate mineral. That is, hematite gives reddish streak. Hardness is about 5. And how it is altering into many other uh, minerals. And what happens, this is important. It is asked once, I think, in previous papers. Uh, what happens when uh, hematites absorb water? It will form hydrated iron oxide. Right? Fe2O3 is hematite. Fe2O3, 3H2O is limonite, which is hydrated hematite. Likewise, geotite will also be formed. Limonite is also known as bog iron. This is yellow to brown in color. 
Next, geothite, limonite or geothite, they have some adsorbent water. Hardness is 5.3. Gibbicide, it is again aluminum compound, white in color. It is found in highly weathered soils of tropics, that is laterites. Next is carbonate group, which are having carbonates in them. Calcite, calcium carbonate, dolomite, calcium magnesium carbonate. One interesting thing is that, anyway, we'll see it in soil formation, but uh, among calcite and calcium bicarbonate, calcium bicarbonate is soluble in water, but not calcium carbonate. This feature plays a main role in the process of calcification and decalcification. We'll see it later, don't worry. We'll see it later in uh, soil forming processes, how this calcification and decalcification are influenced by this uh, solubility nature of calcite and Calcium bicarbonate. Likewise, siderite, FeCO3. And if we say carbonates are over, oxides are over, next is sulfate. Sulfates means what we'll remember? Gypsum, CaSO4, 2H2O. Other one is phosphate group. Uh, most common is rock phosphate, which is a primary source of phosphorus in soil. And rock phosphate, it is not uh, that much reactive with water. But when it is reacted with carbonic acid, it decomposes very fastly. This is important. Rock phosphate. Uh, as we see this uh, phosphate group or rock phosphate, under two acidic conditions or two alkaline conditions, it can't uh, survive. It will get either adsorbed or precipitated. That is what written here. It becomes immobile in calcareous soils and also it precipitates under acidic environment. So that's all about our first class that is rocks and minerals. I know there are many examples in this topic but students you must have to remember all the associated examples with it because each and every example from this topic is being asked either in multiple choice or matching or so but don't worry you keep on giving more readings for the uh, every example like how you read for general agriculture. So try to read more number of times and how I explain concepts, some concepts, you read it in that way so that you may not be confused. This is what differentiate you from other students. You are learning uh, the concept and then you are matching it with the other concepts and giving examples to it. So this is what differentiate you from the other students. So what we are giving here is this much and it is up to you how you will read and how you will take it and the recorded uh, class will also be given to you after two hours or so that is at 8 or 9 pm today and the notes will also be shared for master class students and if you have any queries feel free to ask now the session is open for discussion okay Hello. Hello, students. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, how is the first class? Yeah, did did yeah. I make you feel frightened or so? Yes, ma'am. It was good. <laughs> okay, don't worry. There are many examples. If you see many books like... Uh, what are all the books you read like till now? Ma'am, only... I have read only treatise. Actually, oh. Dikidas and I triple S, I have not read. Okay, okay. No problem. Um means you are coming it in backward direction. First, you have to read textbooks and then you have to see three times, right? Uh, first okay. of all, when you are reading three times, you may feel it difficult, right? Now, this, for example, if you take this concept, what is there? Intrusive and extrusive rock or silicates. No book will teach you the those things, like how I explained you now. So, try to understand the concept. Don't get fear. These examples are common to every student who is writing this physical sciences. Okay, it is not only to you. 
it is common to everyone everyone will suffer so try to remember more examples that is what can fetch you marks okay and try to okay. keep codes for examples everyone will have unique codes right if i give any code in english you may feel it difficult if you keep yourself it is good okay 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 ask if you have any doubts ask me ma'am uh, just pyroxen and amphibol uh, structure can you please explain me the uh -huh, structure pyroxen pyroxen and amphibol hmm hmm structure of that pyroxen okay okay pyroxen and amphibol they both are ionosilicates right and also in ionosilicates what we have wait i'll draw here Is the whiteboard visible to you? No, ma'am. No. 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 Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Now it is visible. It is visible, right? Ah, uh, pyroxene and amphibol, right? See, these pyroxenes and amphiboles, they both come under ionosilicates. Okay, ionosilicates are nothing but chain silicates so the silicate ion uh, units what we are seeing in this structure they are arranged in a chain like manner in pyroxenes what we are seeing see the draw this as a skeleton in a single chain the silicate tetrahedron are arranged like this okay so here central silicon atom is there silicon 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 and silicon these are all the silicon atoms and coming to oxygens now here one oxygen will be there again here unity is continuing i am just drawing some part of the unit okay to another tetrahedron unity is continuing and oxygen is sharing between two tetrahedra see if we consider only this tetrahedron this oxygen is getting shared between two and this oxygen is also getting shared between two so from each tetrahedron two oxygens are involved in the sharing of bond so this is what the ca main character of single chain ionosilicate that is pyroxene is two o atoms are involved in the sharing of bond if we see amphiboles which are double chain silicates amphiboles are double chain so two chains will be combined here like this two chains will be combined here same silicon central atom will be remaining same silicon its oxygen atoms which differs silicon 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 if we consider this part this will be jointed by another oxygen okay this is silicon one oxygen from this unit is involved in sharing another oxygen is also involved in sharing third oxygen is also involved in sharing if we consider this one this part so in this tetrahedron three oxygens are getting shared with the other tetrahedron and again in the same amphibole if we are seeing second one this part this tetrahedron here third oxygen is not there right only two are getting shared two oxygens are getting shared like pyroxene so two oxygen every alternate tetrahedron shares three oxygen with the other tetrahedron here every tetrahedron shares two oxygen with other tetrahedron okay got it yes ma'am okay yes ma'am got Based it you just write formula how you can arrive at the formula you just try i'll tell you uh, you just try okay 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 then feel free to ask there is nothing to get worry feel free to ask no that okay okay saurav what about you yes ma'am yeah how is the session i'm oh, fine ma'am okay how is your preparation 
मैम एक्चुअली आई ओनली ज्वाइन फॉर रिविजन पर्पस हाउ यू टीचिंग ज्वाइन ओके एक्चुअली दिस ईयर आई क्वालिफाई फॉर जेआरएफ एग्जाम हम्म हम्म ओनली सी हाउ वे ऑफ टीचिंग आई विल ज्वाइन मैम टीचिंग ओके व्हाट्स योर रैंक दिस ईयर 82 81 मैम ओके यू आर गिविंग अनदर अटेम्प्ट और व्हाट नो 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 मैम नो मैम सो वेयर यू गॉट एडमिशन रानी लक्ष्मी बाई री गुड like you are interested to join now also it's good okay then if there are any doubts uh, i am going to end, end this session okay uh, i think uh, not many students will be there for physical sciences but if you know any of the student just try to share this knowledge with them and also tell them to join master course if they are interested okay 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 then i'm ending the session bye mm -hmm.